above every principality, Lord. Above every kingdom, we exalt you. We exalt you, Lord.
you lift up those hands above your head and lift up your voice and begin to clap unto the Lord with praise with praise with worship with glory yes Lord yes yes Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Whoa. God is good. Come on, And all the time. Give it of your name. Give someone a high five and bless them in Jesus. Babu go a high five. Hallelujah. Thank you, worship team. I greet you all in the name of our Lord Jesus. I hope you had a wonderful day today. Did you? Hallelujah. Amen. So let us bring it to an end with glory to God. Amen. Amen. Let me ask you to go with me to the book of Isaiah chapter 43. Father, we thank you for this far you have brought us. We thank you for everyone that you have enabled to be here. Lord, we pray that the seeds that are being sown in our hearts will not be stolen. But that you, Lord, you will water them and bring them to fruition. That we shall make a difference in our nations, in our cities, and our communities. To the glory of your name. In Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. Yesterday, Joe, I was sharing with you about God needing witnesses and also the devil also needs witnesses and both of them are looking at man to be their witness and it is how we make our choices that we are either God's witnesses or Satan is witnesses. Let me just give you one scripture and there are so many all over the Bible. But let me give you one that emphasizes the point we were making yesterday. One of the things I wanted to make clear is that many people have a wrong concept of what it means to be a witness for Jesus. They understand it as being, I mean, going out to tell people that Jesus loves them, Jesus died for them, they should give their lives to Jesus. But I was trying to show you that the concept of being a witness for God did not start only after the gospel came. It's from way back in the beginning. And God wanted people who would stand and show the world that he is God. And he would show that he is a God who is glorious. Who is loving. Who is just. And who is all in all. And that besides him. There is no other God. And there shall never be any other God. On the contrary. Satan also wants witnesses. Witnesses that will prove to the world. That God is not God. That God is not loving. That God is not glorious. That God is not just. That his word is impossible. That it is impossible to obey him. And when he can convince anybody. Who loves God 
especially to compromise on the word with the argument that it is too hard that it is impossible he has won a witness and that witness he can use to say to God you are not just you judged us fallen angels for not keeping your word but your word is impossible here is the witness he loves you he is called by your name but he also affirms that your word is impossible when Christians understand that we would never allow ourselves to be compromised to simply say, oh, God understands. Oh, that, that word is too hard. Because that's exactly what the devil is looking for. And when we succumb to it, we become his witnesses. On that day, he will bring us up. He says, even your son, so and so, affirms it that your word is impossible. It's impossible to obey you. He loves you. He's called by your name. But he could not do it either. Do you remember the picture painted in the book of Zechariah? When Joshua stood before the throne of God. And the devil came to accuse him. And God had to rebuke him. That picture is true of all situations. So let us read in the book of Isaiah. Chapter 43. Verse 1. And I want you to pay attention not just to the words but to the spirit behind the words. Think of God who is speaking these words and what his desire is. Hallelujah. Amen. But now thus says the Lord who created you O Jacob and he who formed you O Israel. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by my name. You are mine. Naeka kano watu wa yogera mukamu ya kutonda gwe yakobo. E ya kukola gwe isiraidi. Totia, mkunu nude, nakui tanga mpiti da dalele nyalio. Oni wange. When you pass through the waters, I'll be with you. Bwono itanga mazama wangu, nabe nanga nawe. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overthrow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burnt, nor shall the flame scorch you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I gave Egypt for your ransom, Ethiopia and Seba in your place. Kumanga nzemu kama katonda wo, katonda mtukufo wa Israeli, omroko zuo. Na wayo misiri, gwosoro kutebwa. Era kusi ne seba, miwayo gwofune mirembe jo. Since you were precious in my sight, you have been honored. I have loved you. Therefore, I will give men for you and people for your life. Kumango liwa muendo jendi, owe chitibwa, era kumanga nkwagala, ndiwa yaba sajja kuruluo, mpeyo na abantu, kuruobura mubuo. Fear not, for I am with you. I will bring your descendants from the east and gather you from the west. I will say to the north, give them up. And to the south, do not keep them back. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Totia, kubanga nzendi na awe. Ndire teza dedio kufebu vanjiba. Eda kunganyo kufebu guanjiba. Ndiga mbobu chiko wa kononti. Wayo bolina. Nobu chiko wa donti. Toba ganida. Leta batabani bango kufewala. Nebo wala bango kufa. 
kun komerero yensi Everyone who is called by my name whom I have created for my glory I have formed him yes I have made him Buli muntu ya night we linyali yange gwe natondo rechti wa change gwe nakola gwe natonda Bring out the blind people who have eyes and the deaf who have ears. Let all the nations be gathered together. Let the people be assembled. Who among them can declare this and show us the former things? Let them bring out their witnesses that they may be justified. Furumi ababalina masona inga tebalaba. Abali na matuna inga teba ulira. Ama wanga gondaga kungane na haba antubaje. Ane kuwo, e yali ayo gede kubintu mino. Ane kuwe yali ala angiri debi yali uo. Leka bale taba julizi. Okukaka santi bali batufu. Aba ulira. Bagamenti, dalabo chiri. Do you hear the, the sound of his voice? Oh, uli e dobo zidi e? He is arguing a point. Aline songa jaja yo. He says, let them come. Let them prove it. Let them tell us, have there, has there ever been something like this? Let them bring their witnesses. He's telling the world because the, the devil also has his witnesses. Then he goes on. Oh, let them hear and say it is truth. You are my witnesses, says the Lord. And my servants whom I have chosen, that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Mm. Before me there was no God formed, nor shall there be after me. Le kabaleta ba juli zoka kasanti ba leba tufa ba wudi da ba gamenti da la bochiri. Muri ba juli ruaba angi bwa yogera mukama. Omwere zau angi kwenye naronda. Muri okemu manye. Munzikirize mutegere nganze uyo tewali katonda yansoka era tali bakatonda alinziririra nze nze mwene nze mukama okujja konze tewali mulokozi do you hear that obi uli debyo hallelujah the Amen. issue is not about your doing this or you are doing that ensonga tali kuchokozo bachotakoze the issue is between him and satan ensonga ile kuya no mubi God wants proof that he is God and there is no any other besides him. And he says, you are my witness. The role of a witness is to bring proof to bring testimony to bring evidence. Now listen. He says, you are my witnesses says the Lord and my servant whom I have chosen now why did he choose that you may know and believe me do you remember where we started yesterday the people who know their God should be strong and this is life eternal. To know him, the only one and true God. And he says, I chose you. That you may know me. And believe me. Before you go preaching. Before you go telling everybody God loves you. You first show that you know him. And you believe him. When you believe him, you don't defy what he says. You don't think that what he says is impossible. You don't think that it's not right. You know that whatever he says, that is truth. That's what it means to be a witness for God. Now continue, he says, before me, no, he says that you may know and believe me. And understand that I am he. The devil may say that I'm not God. But I want you to know that I am he. I want you to be still and know that I'm God. 
Brother, sister, that's what it means to be a witness for God. It's not so much about talking about Jesus. That comes later. But what you are inside of you, your relationship with God, that's what really matters. And he goes on to say, before me, there was no God for me. Uh-uh. There was no God before me. No shall there be after me. I even I am the Lord. Do you hear the case in court? Do you hear what you are being called to witness? We are living in a generation today when the world wants to make God an outdated idea. In the last days, Jesus said, you will be hated by all nations because of me. We are seeing nations progressively legislating against God. We are seeing entertainment and media treating God as a ridiculous idea. We are hearing people being ashamed of confirming to the world that they belong to him. And Christians are becoming very wise to express themselves without revealing that they belong to God. The whole issue of being witnesses is about this. And the world wants to silence us. And the world wants to make us ashamed of him. You remember Jesus said when you are ashamed of me before the world, I will be ashamed of you before my father. What we are talking about here is reality. Now let us go on. I have declared and I have saved. I have proclaimed and there was no foreign God among you. Therefore, <laughs> You are my witnesses. Nze na leto kore sewa nena angirira nendo kora nze sosi katonda mulala muguira mumwe muri ba juli ruava angi mukama. You are my witnesses, says the Lord, that I am God. Muri ba juli ruava angi mukama. Amen. You know what that means? Remember those young men, three young men in Babylon. Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. They were told to bow down to worship an idol. And they said, oh king, we respect you. But let it be known. As to bow down to that idol, we shall never do that. If you choose to throw us in the fire, our God is able to save us. But even if he chooses not to, let it be clear, we will never bow down to another God. Those were witnesses. Those were witnesses. When the government made a law government that no one should pray to any other God except to the, to the king, Daniel said, Daniel that doesn't apply to me. To me, there is only one God. If it means dying, for him it is worthy. And he prayed and he was taken and thrown in the lion's den. Brother, sister, being a witness, now listen to this, it's not so much a talk business, it's a walk business. It's how you walk and how you stand. 
And he takes the power of the Holy Spirit. Let us continue. But listen, I told you don't just listen to the words. Listen to the spirit of the one who is speaking. And he says, Therefore, you are my witnesses, says the Lord, that I am God. Indeed, before the day was, I am he. Mm. And there's no one who can deliver out of my hand. Mm. I work, and who will reverse it? We kuva kuna kwezida, nzinzuyo. Tewani no ma inzo kunyo muntum mukono gwange. Chienkora, anya inzo kuchichusa. Thus says the Lord, your Redeemer. Oh, Holy One of Israel, the Holy One of Israel, for your sake I will send to Babylon and bring them all down as fugitives. The Chaldeans will rejoice in their ships. I am the Lord, your Holy One, the Creator of Israel, your King. Thus says the Lord who makes a way in the sea and a path through the mighty waters. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Now, brother, sister, if there is only one thing you pick out of this Africa, the heart of spiritual warfare is not about what you do or what happens to you. It's about what happens to the name of the Lord. The devil wants to defy and dispute that he is God. And God is saying, that is what I'm fighting for. Do you remember in the book of Isaiah 45? He made a vow. He said, I am the Lord. That is my name. I have sworn by myself that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that I am the Lord. That is the heart of the warfare. In every situation, when you are struggling to make a decision, ask yourself, what will show that he is God? And stand for that. Be a witness that he is God. And besides him, there is no any other. When we start doing that, brother, there are many things that we have been doing we will never do again. There are many things we've been allowing to happen will never happen again. Even there are many conversations we have been listening to which we will not allow to be spoken in our presence again. When somebody starts to speak like that, you say, ah, ah. for the sake of my God, I don't want to listen to that. If you want to talk about that, go somewhere else, not in my presence. For I will not tolerate anything that defies the name of my father. Beloved, when you adapt this mindset, it changes everything about you. Let us continue. Verse 18. Do not remember the former things. No consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I'll even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Hmm. Because the, the beasts of the field will honor me, the jackals and the ostriches, because I give water in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my people, my chosen. 
Ensole zomu nsiko zenzi samwe chitibwa. Ebi vene ebi uguru. Kuwanga, nzenga ba mazimu dungu. Nemi gamurukora, <laughs> okunyue sabantu bange, habaronde bange. You know, do you remember when Jesus was on the back of a donkey? Going to Jerusalem. And the people were shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna day. to he who comes in the name of the Lord. And the Pharisees said, Silence the people. Stop them saying what they are saying. And Jesus said, If they keep quiet, the stones will shout. Now I want to tell you something. Do you hear what the Lord says? If you will not honor me and treat me as God, the jackals will honor me. The wild beasts will honor me. It's up to you. Make a choice. If you will not treat him as God, the animals will treat him as God. And the birds will honor him. They will thank him for the water he provides. Ask your neighbor, what's your choice? Come on. If mm. they are not looking at you, touch them. Say, what's your choice, sister? Are you going to honor God as God? Verse 21 says, These people I have formed for myself, mm. they shall declare my praise. Now listen to verse 25. This is so beautiful. He says, I, even I, I am he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake. Do you hear that? When you come to say, Lord, forgive me. He says, Agamba. I am the one Nze. who takes away your sins. Nze and I do nabiyo. it for my sake. I do it for my sake. That you may go so and genda. show the world si. that I am God. Nze Amen. 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 If we understand these things, we wouldn't be confessing and going back to sin and confessing and going back to sin. Because that's not the purpose why he forgives us. He forgives us for his sake. That we may be a witness to the entire world. The Bible says the whole creation is groaning, waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Oh, hallelujah. Are we together? So having connected with the flow of yesterday as we were unfolding, I want now to move to another element. What is it that makes it so hard for us to honor God as God. If we want to be true witnesses, what is it we must deal with that we may overcome all resistance? Are you with me? Are you with me? Can I teach you how to say amen? Hallelujah. Amen. Please pay attention to this point. Because it is one many people never think about. Let us go to the book of Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 28. And we shall read from verse 11. God was talking about Lucifer. And these are, these are the words he said about Lucifer. Moreover, son of, moreover, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation for the king of Tyre and say to him, Thus says the Lord God. 
You were the seal of perfection. Full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. You were in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was your covering. The sardius, the topaz, the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, and the turquoise, and the emerald with gold. The workmanship of your tim timbers and pipes was prepared for you on the day you were created. Mm. You were the anointed cherub who covers. I established you. You were on the holy mountain of God. You walked back and forth in the midst of the fiery stones. You were perfect in your ways from the days when they were created until iniquity was found in you. Echigambo chama kama ni chini jina na ngamanti. Omo na omo mtun. Kungo bagi rakawa kwa tuuro. Mtega zinti watu wa yogera mukama katonda anti. Gowari echo kula bla kichito kiri dengo juda magazi. Era watu unga watu kiri amboronji. Wari mu adene nemero ya katonda. Bole ginger yomo endonga li kubik kako. Sadio, topazi, alimansi, beruro, sokamu, yasepi, safiro. E ginger na wanda gala. O kuteke wateke bwa konebi kunyweza biyakole bwa muzabu. Era kuruna kule watonde bwa biyatege kebwa. Wari kero biyamu kumi afuwe bwa kama futa. Na kuaula uansonge yo. Beranga kuri sasa ulutu kuvurua katonda, na utambuli wa katika maingi ya gomo liro. Tewari kocha kuna njia zawa chona, o kuvaka kuna kuruwa tuonde wa, o kutu sota libo tu kirevu, lo wada biki ramu goi. Sixteen. By the abundance of your trading, you became filled with the violence, with violence within, and you sinned. Therefore, I cast you as a profane thing, out of the mountain of God, and I destroyed you, O covering cherub from the midst of the fiery stones. Your heart was lifted up because of your beauty. You corrupted your wisdom for the sake of your splendor. I cast you to the ground. I laid you before kings that they might gaze at you. Mubikurabi ebinji wa jure mpisembi. Ira no kore ebibi. Chena van kugoba kurisoziru wa katonda. No obu suavo obunji. Nen kugoba gwe kerube ya kuma ngo kufa mainja gomo liro. Omutima kwa gwari na malala uroburu unji wo. Ne we limba limba or rich tea watcho. Chinavanku can you gakunsi? Nenku for the choke secure and masogava kabaka. Praise the Lord. Mukama yebas we. Now listen, brothers and sisters. Our Uganda more did say. There are two statements here that God made about Lucifer. One way began Bobby Bidi one come about Gera Kurus. In the beginning he said to him, Amugamba Kuntandi kwa. You were full of wisdom. Into what you dama gezi. What does it mean to be full of wisdom? And we are talking about God's wisdom. Not the wisdom of the world. The wisdom of God is the way God sees things. The way God understands things. The way God considers things right or wrong. So when God says to Lucifer, you were full of wisdom. He is literally saying, your thinking was in alignment with mine. The way you understood things was exactly my way. You accepted what I called right. Good. And proper. You were perfect. But in verse 17, he says, Agamba, you corrupted your wisdom. What does it mean to corrupt your wisdom? It is to adapt a way of thinking that is different from God's way of thinking. Seeing things Contrary to the way God sees them. Calling things what God does not call them. Considering things God calls good as though they are not good. Considering things God calls evil as though they are good. If you were to take time and meditate on this, that is the root of all sins. That's the beginning of all sin. 
what goals what god calls right you call wrong what god calls wrong you call right and the next thing is you are going to find ways of justifying it what god call, what god calls evil you think but that's not really bad let see what's wrong with that the moment you start dealing with God like that. You have already taken the step towards sinning. There's no way we can corrupt our wisdom and continue to please God. And when we talk about wisdom, we are talking about our thought flow. Our attitude. Our, the way we look at things. And God says, adapt my way. <laughs> and the Bible says in the book of Isaiah 53, <laughs> that all of us like lost sheep are strayed away in our own ways. And when he came, he said, I am the truth. The way and the life. We cannot have our way and his way. His way is his 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 wisdom. Our way is his his wisdom. Are you with me? Are you with me? I, I can talk of, about this for hours because it's such a mystery, it's such a deceptive mystery. But let me just use scriptures. And I want to show you the, the weight of what I'm trying to share with you. In the book of Genesis, chapter 3, from verse 1, let us read. Now the serpent was cunning, more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord had made. And he said to the woman, Has God indeed said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the trees of the garden, but of the tree of the fruit which is in the midst of the garden, God said, You shall not eat, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Kala no msota gwali mkala wakala wakuchire nsolo zonezo monsiko. Mkama katonda ze ya tonda, negugambo mkazi inti. Kazi katonda ya gama ante mwini anga kumutigwa no guomu nimiro. Mkazi na damu msota anti, tulia kubuli mtio guomu nimiro. Choka katonda ya tula gira ante mwini anga kuchiva la chomuti. Oguli wakati mwini nimiro wadogu kwa atako mwini moku fa. Now, look at this with me please. We said wisdom is to think like God thinks and to see things as God sees them and to take them as he takes them. Do you hear the woman? What is what wisdom is she operating from? It's the wisdom of God. He says no. We can eat of all the trees. Except the one in the midst of the garden. That one we are not supposed to eat. No don't even touch. Otherwise we shall die. Her mindset is in line, alignment with God's mindset. She is repeating and speaking what God would say. Then the devil said, you shall not surely die. Now, whose wisdom is that? Don't discourage me. Whose wisdom is speaking now? That is Satan's wisdom. It is called corrupt wisdom. Everybody say with me, corrupt wisdom. There is divine wisdom and there is corrupt wisdom. God says when you eat, when you touch, you will die. Another wisdom says, no, you will not die. Already, you are facing rebellion. You are facing sin. It goes on to say, 
God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Na yomu sole ni kumugambu wa mkazi niti temugenda kufa. Kumamba katonda manyenga ule mwilikuli yako. Hamasuga mwilu gadizibuka. Era mwilifana nanga ye. Okumanyange chiru unji ne chibi. Now listen to the next verse. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food. Awo mkazi wailaba ngo mtimu unji okulia. Hey, hey, hey. Since when? Kufati. God says, you eat it, you die. Now the woman is saying, the tree is good for food. Which wisdom is she now operating from? Corrupt wisdom. Say it aloud. When the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree desirable to make one wise she took of the of his fruits and ate awo mukazi we yalaba ngo mutimu lunji nga gusa nso okutunulako eranga gwe gombebe okuleta amagezi nano ge chibala nalia did you hear that what should it decho the tree is going to bring her wisdom bwo mutiku gena muletera amagezi make her wise era gena mufura kagezi munyu at first she was in God's wisdom. Now she wants to get something else. Also called wisdom. But not God's wisdom. What is that called? Corrupt wisdom. Brother and sister. That is the root of all sins. From that moment when both Woman and man were no longer seeing things as God sees them. They were no longer thinking the way God thinks. They had now been programmed to do everything wrong. Let me show you another scripture. In the book of Romans. Chapter 1. Verse 21. I am praying that the Holy Spirit will emphasize this in your heart. You and I can never be faithful witnesses until we deal with this issue. Until we deal with this issue, we can never be true witnesses. Verse 28. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a debased mind to do the things which are not fitting. Even as they didn't want to retain God in their thought process. They did not want to stay aligned with God's way of thinking. So when they made that choice, God gave them over. To what? The Bible, the, the word here is debased mind. Other versions say reprobate mind. Other versions say corrupt mind. What is it God gave them over to? Corrupt wisdom. And what, what does corrupt wisdom do? Listen. He gave them over to a corrupt mind to do the things which are not fitting. Like being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil-mindedness. They are whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, violent, proud, 
boastful, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful. That is what corrupt wisdom does. Once we are given over to a corrupt mind, all these things simply flow through us. Do you remember when Paul said, What I want to do is not what I do. And what I hate is what I do. In my inner self, I love the word of God. And I want to do it. But in my flesh, I am a captive. And many, many of us are like that. We love God genuinely. And we love righteousness genuinely. But we don't know why. Righteousness simply runs away from us. What we want to do is not what we do. What we hate is what we do. What we are ashamed of is what we end up with. We are not proud of it. We don't like it. We even hide it. And yet we don't know how to be free. There is no determination that will set anybody free until we deal with corruptness. Amen. Amen. Listen to verse 32. Verse 32. Who, knowing the righteous judgment of God, that those who practice such things are deserving of death, but not only do the same, but also approve of those who practice them. Because That's talking about us who are believers. We know what is evil. We know what will be judged by God. We know what leads to death. And he says, but they not only keep on doing the same, they even encourage others to do the same. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, I want to take you to another scripture. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 9. Again, I want to emphasize this is where all rebellion and sin comes from. Let us go to the book of James. James chapter 4. Thank you, Jesus. No, let us go to James chapter 3. Verse 13. It says, Who is wise? An understanding among you. Let him show by good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. Of what? Meekness of wisdom. It's only out of that that we can live in good conduct. Now listen, verse 14. But if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. This wisdom does not descend from above. It is earthly, sensual, and demonic. 
Bumuba no mutimo muchai, or good you deno wujia, Iranga mwefako mweka, Temusana de kwe wanana kuriyanga mukwanta na mazima, kuwanga, a magazine gago te gaveri katonda muguru wabura, ga kunsi, era, siga muoyo, wazira, gasitani. Do you hear that? Are you already Brother, sister, the Holy Spirit wants to show us how we can stand and live victorious. Before you do, I bind you. I cast you out. <laughs> the first warfare is here. In our mindset. And all evil acts come out of a wisdom that comes from not from above. It comes from the world. It's worldly wisdom. It is sensual. It is of the flesh. And it's demonic. It's of Satan. Today you and I can now zero down. And say where do I start this walk? How do I start this new walk? It starts with a, a call to deal with our wisdom. Verse 17 then says. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure. Then peaceable, then gentle, then willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Nayama geza gava muguru, okuso kabio na manongofu, eraga mirembe, gafayo kubantua balala, maurize, gadju dokusasira, nebi barebi runji, tegaso sola mubantu, era sigma namfusi. Amen. Amen. I said earlier that many people never even think about this element of our wisdom. And yet see how much is dependent on wisdom. Which wisdom are you operating from? Divine wisdom has been defined and we see it's pure, it's loving, it's impartial, it's non-hypocritical. It is not hypocritical. All of that. And he has also told us now when there is envy, there is strife, there is ambition, there is all this. Don't lie that you are walking in the spirit. This is not the wisdom from above. Now listen, I want to give you another scripture. It's in the first book of Corinthians. Verse 30. Chapter 1, verse 30. But of him, you are in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God, and righteousness, and sanctification, and redemption. Choka kuboyo muri mu Kristo Yesu e yafuka amagezi jetuli okuveri katonda bwe butukirivu no kutukirizibwa no kununulibwa Hallelujah Amen Jesus is our wisdom Yesu ge magezi gaffe He has become our wisdom Yafuka amagezi gaffe and out of that ero kuva mwecho we get righteousness tufuna obutukirivu sanctification tutukuzibwa and redemption no kununulibwa Wow. Chitiri. Wow. Mm. Isn't this an area you and I need to focus on? Let me ask you to go with me to the book of Romans. Chapter 12. From verse 1. It says. I beseech ye therefore brethren. By the mercies of God. That you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. No rich Aborugan and Bega, your Roxa Silaqua Catonda, Muenga Yamibrija Menga Sadak and Naman to Kuvu, a San Sacatonda, Quequayo Quamoquas, Quequereza Quamme or Quomoyo. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing. Of your mind, 
that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Sote mwe fana nyizanga ba mirembe jino. Na ye mchusi wengu roku zobu jebiro zobu ya mwe. Oku kakasibua, oku kakasibua, oku simi wakwa katonda, oku sanyusa, ero kwa mazima. Hallelujah. Amen. I said hallelujah. Nambi aleluya. How can we be transformed? Tunachusi watutia. By the renewing of the mind. Endoze nambu yetu zobu ya. Every other strategy doesn't work. Even if you determine I'm going to be holy, I determine I'm going to be holy. When the thought process that drives you does not change, it will not be any different. And when we renew our minds in him, then we can clearly discern the will of God. The perfect will of God. And Jesus said, yes, not everybody who confesses Lord, Lord will enter the kingdom of heaven. But only he who does the will of God. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Before, let me ask you to go with me to the second book of Corinthians. Chapter 10. Verse 1. Chapter 10. Verse 1. Chapter 10. Verse 1. Now we are going to talk about spiritual warfare. Katino, tugenda kwa kwa utalo uruomu oyo. Verse 4. Oru nyiriru wakuna. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. But are mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ, and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Kubanga, if you are going to be a little bit of 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 a let me call your attention. Please give me attention. The weapons of our warfare are mighty. They are powerful. And this is what they do. They cast down strongholds. They cast down arguments. They bring down every high thing which exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And they take thoughts captive and bring them to obedience in Jesus Christ. Wait a moment. Where do you find arguments? Show me by your hand. Where do you find arguments? Where do you find the knowledge of God? Where do you find thoughts? Hey, what does that tell you? The weapons of our warfare are focusing on the mind. That's where the first war is. I wrote a little book. It's called Battle of the Mind. Maybe before the end of the camp it will be here. Now, when, I, I don't know whether this is sinking inside of you. In others, the Lord is saying, don't waste time. Trying this and that and that and that. And that. Fighting on this and this and this and this. Learn what to fight as a priority. Deal with your wisdom. Once that changes, the rest will follow. Hallelujah. Amen. So as we are here in this Africa, let us leave this place a transformed people. Even before you change your wisdom, but if you know this is what I'm going to focus upon, you have already started changing. 
because you are no longer being distracted and de deceived now you understand where to focus and I'm going to show you in a very quick short, short while how to go about it now uh, we could go on talking about wisdom but let us move now on to the third element of our message the third element is what is the force behind this corrupt wisdom? Because if you're going to co fight corrupt wisdom, then you need to know what is the force behind corrupt wisdom. And when you discover that, then you focus on that force. Let us go back to where it all started. In heaven, with the rebellion of Lucifer. There is no devil who tempted Lucifer. <laughs> there is no devil, there is no demon, there is no tempter who Te, tempted Lucifer. How did he fall? The Bible says, we, we read in Ezekiel, God was telling Lucifer, you were perfect. You were the seal, the model of beauty. Everything that you needed was inside of you. Your music instruments were inside of you. Precious stones were inside of you. You were the anointed cherub. And you were the one covering. You are the top one of all. Why? Because I made you that. For my glory. But you corrupted your wisdom because of your splendor. Uh oh. Mm. You were you are what you are for him. For his glory. But when your attention was taken off him and to yourself, you were overwhelmed by how beautiful you were. How glorious you are. What splendor you can emit. And as, as long as you are overwhelmed by that, consumed by self Centeredness. You can no longer think like him. You start thinking as yourself. You start think, thinking of what you want. What you deserve. And we see later on. Once he was obsessed by who he is, he began to see that where God had put him is not good enough for him. Do you hear corrupt wisdom? Divine wisdom thinks like God thinks. Corrupt wisdom thinks differently from God. Lucifer thought, mm -mm. Lucifer at this level, I am like the other angels. I'm at the same level. This is not good. Mm -hmm. I shouldn't be here. I want to take my throne and lift it high above the stars. Of God. I think that's where I deserve to be. I want to sit and preside over the congregation of heaven. I want to be like the most high. Everybody say, I, 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 me, me, and mine. That's where it all starts. And you, you listen to people who are disgruntled in church. It's all about 
For me, I don't enjoy it. When that pastor preaches, oh, he powers me. Why does he preach? Hey. He bores you so therefore he should not preach. Yeah, because I don't enjoy him. I, 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 I. And that's where we get self-centeredness, self-will, self-gratification, self-exaltation, self promotion and all those things let us read the scripture how are you fallen from heaven O Lucifer son of the morning how are you cut down to the ground you who weakened nations for you have said in your heart everybody say wisdom in your heart you have said, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation, on the farthest side of the north. I will ascend above the, above the heights of the clouds, and I will be the most like the most high. Hmm. You hear that? I, I, I. That spirit sense of I is what we is called self. It is not dependent on God. It is self-dependent. And once we sink in that mode, we can never fulfill the righteousness of God. Now, let, let me take you back. When Lucifer came to the woman, did God indeed say that you cannot eat of these fruits? The woman said, no. We can eat of all the fruits. But except the one in the middle. That one we don't eat, we don't touch, lest we die. She was speaking depending on God. This is what God said. Why do you believe it? Because God said. Why do you not eat? Because God said I shouldn't. She was, self, she was dependent on God. And Lucifer said. You will not die. <laughs> but God knows that when you eat of it, you'll be like him in knowing good and evil. In other words, you don't have to depend on him anymore. You can make your own decisions. You can decide what is right, what is wrong, what you want, what you don't want, what you'll do, what you'll not do. What was Lucifer offering the woman? Self dependence and the woman accepted it and she made her own decision that tree is good for food and it is good to bring wisdom and in her own self will she took the fruit and ate and she also gave her husband. She's no longer operating dependent on God. She's now choosing her own way. Do you remember what Jesus said? He said, The son can do nothing except he sees the father. And the son will say nothing except he hears the father. Jesus was not self dependent. He was dependent to the father. He says, Even the works I'm doing, they are not mine, they are the works of the father. Do you see Brothers, self. Some. I said in the beginning, the power Jesus was talking about, that you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Then you will be my witnesses. 
He was not just emphasizing or talking about power to work miracles. As good as that is. Power to cast out demons. As important as that is. Even power to raise the dead. That one he had already given them. You go to Matthew chapter 10. He said go and preach. They preach that the kingdom of God is near. Heal the sick, cast out demons, raise the dead. That one he had already given them. But there's something they did not have. When he was being arrested, they all fled and deserted him. Why? Self-preservation. Are you with me? Because they wanted to preserve themselves. They were willing to run away. Peter, Peter denied him. And even cursed when they said you are with him. Why? Self preservation. If you ask Peter, he, you betrayed the Lord. He said, no, 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 no. I love the Lord. The situation. I was trying to survive. How do you survive? Self preservation. I denied him to stay alive. I cast when they put my name together with his name. Tell somebody, I hate self. Speak it as, it, as if I you hate mean it. Self. Brother, self will make you do something you know is not right. But you, you, you think, I have no choice. When these men were filled with the power, they stood before the Sanhedrin and they said, He is the Lord. You killed him, but God raised him up. We are the witnesses. <laughs> and when they were told, Don't speak again in his name, they said, Tell us, uh -uh, is it better for us to do your will or to obey God? They were different men. There was power in their hearts to stand and show that he is God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Today, even preachers, miracle workers, devil chasers, are sometimes showing lifestyles around self. As long as self is not dead, even if you are working miracles, even if you are chasing demons. Let me tell you something. Can you still bear with me? Can you? One day, I was reading a book written by a very famous evangelist. And the, the title of that book is that thing. That thing. It was a small book. I read it in just in one sitting. But after reading it, I cried. This evangelist was saying in every one of us there is a nature. That nature is natural to us. Because that's what we were born with. And that's what we grew with. That's what we were educated to live like. That's what our culture promotes. Everything we love in the world promotes it. But that's, that nature is of the self. And by the way, 
self life is what the bible calls the flesh the carnal nature the old man the reason is it is called the old man because that is the nature we are born with that's the nature we grow with that's the nature we learn how to defend ourselves with Even when we, when they are training us in uh, business schools or what they teach you to be aggressive to push others out of the way you need to know what you want and go for it you are not responsible for the other man we are taught to be selfish. We are taught to be self-gratifying. We are taught to adore ambition and self-promotion. And this man was saying, when we come to Jesus, we get regenerated in our spirits. We get a new life inside of us. But that's, that does not mean that everything of the old nature has died. We have to work on it. If we do not, something in that nature will one day bring us down. And then he began to give examples of different people used mightily by God. But that thing, something, and when we, we are there, we know those things inside of us. When we go to pray, we confess them. And what shows us that our confession is not really working. We confess them in January, in February, in March, in May, and on and on and on. Why? Because they are not going. They are there. We confess them last year. Even the other year. And we will confess them next year. And this preacher said. Son of God. Man of God. Deal with that thing. Before it deals with you. And he gave an example. He said one day he was preaching in a crusade. And he, there were so many miracles. At the end of it, he stepped out so that he can go home. And he got to, they escorted him to his car. And he got in the car and the ashes went back. But as he started his car, he saw a man with a big jacket walking to his car. But he was staggering. He was drunken. And he came to the car. And he called him by name. And he looked at him and said, how do you know my name? Then suddenly, he realized, oh my God, this man was a preacher, a great evangelist. What happened? The guy was dirty, drunk, and said to him, help me with ten dollars. And this preacher looked and began to cry. He says, oh God. He took a hundred dollar bill and gave it to him. And the other man was so happy. He says, God bless you. God bless you. And so this preacher was saying, oh, that thing. That thing. If we don't deal with it, it doesn't matter whether you might a preacher. It doesn't matter whether you're a miracle worker. That thing. You remember what the Bible says in the book of Galatians chapter 2? Walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. For these two are fighting against each other. You cannot satisfy both. Quickly, 
There are two men. I love to study. Both of them came from shepherd families. Both of them were chosen by God to become kings. Both of them were anointed by the same prophet. Both of them sinned against God. One was forgiven. The other was rejected. One was King Saul. If you read the story of King Saul, he was he started out a very handsome young man. Very courageous. A mighty fighter. Wonderful. But when he became king, that thing was exposed. One day, the Philistines were coming to attack Israel. And the people were shaken. And the prophet said to, jo, to, to Saul, Go and prepare for three days. After three days, I will come and give a sacrifice on your behalf to God. After that, you will go and fight. The battle is yours. And the prophet went away. When the third day came, Saul expected the prophet to be there early in the morning. But when he did not see him, and he was so much in panic. Why? Because the, people, the, the Jews were getting scared. And we are beginning to desert the army. They were leaving him. Now do you see? Either he's God dependent or self dependent. If he was God dependent, he would say, But the Lord is on our side. He will give us the victory. But he was so scared that the people were leaving him. And he emboldened himself and gave the sacrifice. He did not wait for the prophet. As soon as he finished, the prophet arrived and said, what have you done? He said, oh, you see, you delayed. So I emboldened myself. I gave the sacrifice. And Samuel said, the Lord would have confirmed the kingdom in your hands and in your household. But now for what you have done, God is taking the kingdom away from you. He's giving it to somebody else. The next time, the same prophet comes to Saul. He says, thus says the Lord. Go and attack the Amalekites. Don't spare anything. Not man, not goat, not animal, anything. Because of what they did. Saul goes. He fights. He overcomes them. He comes back victorious. But before he arrives, God is feeling so bad. He goes to the prophet and says, Samuel, I regret that I made Saul king. Goodness. God says, I regret. He says, he has turned away from following me. But when Samuel went to meet Saul, Saul says, oh, praise the Lord. I am back from the mission. It's been successful. And so Samuel says, what about the sound of cows I'm hearing in my ears? And the sound of sheep bleating in my ears. And what did Saul say? Oh, oh, the people. Tell your neighbor, the people. What was the reason for his first failure? The people. What's the reason now? The people. 
They wanted to give a sacrifice to your God. Uh, yeah, we have brought them the best ones. We have brought them to your God. <laughs> and God said, Samuel said, Does God honor sacrifice more than obedience? Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, God has rejected you from being king. And Samuel turned to go. Samuel and Saul, Saul held his garment. He says, don't go. I have sinned against God and, yeah. I, and against you. But come with me. Let's go worship the Lord. But as he pulled, the garment tore. And the prophet said, as this garment has been torn, God has torn the kingdom from your hands. He has given it to another man. And Saul so said, hey, wait now. I have sinned. But give me some respect before the people. Gamba, the people. Give me some respect. Come with me. Let's go worship. So Samuel went with him. But the Bible says that is the last time he ever went to him. God rejected Saul. But David was also a man like others. When God chose him, he said, I found a man after my own heart. And David was, a, was full of worship. He loved God. God. Mighty warrior. He was a man of God. But the time came, it was a time of war. And he didn't feel like fighting. He sent them to go fight. And he stayed home. And after waking up in the middle of the morning, he slept in. So when he woke up, he goes out to feel the sunshine. And oh oh. Mm -mm. He sees in the neighbor's home a beautiful woman naked washing. I mean, she was bathing. And he looked. He could have looked away. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. He could have looked away. But something in him. Yes. That thing. That thing. There was a thing there. That was gratifying his last son desires. The Bible says. He went and asked. Who is that woman? And the people said, hey. I don't remember exact words, but they said, she is the wife of Uriah, who is this, I mean, the son of so and so. And it was like, hey, king of Adichi. She is someone's wife. And he said, oh, okay, okay. okay. Then he called others. Go and bring her to me. Say I want to talk to her. What was driving him? Say that that thing. And that thing is where? And she came. The king has called you. And the, the rest of the story you know. Something happened. And, and you know, after, after that, the drive comes down. 
At first he was feeling I can't do without her. But now it's over, it's over. That's how it works. Unfortunately, a note comes from the woman. Take it to the king. Don't open it. The king gets it. Says, oh my God. The woman is pregnant. Oh. <laughs> and David. A man after God's heart. Decided I'm going to solve this. Bring for me Uriah. In his mind, self dependent, he's going to solve it. In his corrupt wisdom, bring Uriah. Uriah comes. He eats with him, giving him wine. Drink some more, drink some more. I mean that that he says, it's okay, you can go and sleep home. You can go and be with your wife. And the, woman, the man goes out but does not go to his home. He sleeps by the gate. That night, David must have slept very well. I have solved everything. <laughs> Now nobody will ever know that I am the one responsible. But in the morning they told him Uriah slept by the gate. Oh no. He didn't go home. Tell him I'm inviting you for dinner again. Is that divine wisdom is using? That's corrupt wisdom. You may be a man of God. You may be a great one. But if we don't deal with corrupt wisdom, one day, that thing, that thing, he brought Uriah on the table. This time he gave him more drink, more drink, more drink. Said, okay, go home to your wife. The man went by the gate. I'm sure David slept thinking. Oh, I, ho I hope he went home. The, the morning they said, uh, uh, the man slept here. So David said, okay. I have to do something different. Uriah, go back to the battlefield. But take this letter to your commander. And the letter said, put Uriah right where it is hottest. And leave him, don't, don't cover him. Unfortunately, Uriah was killed. I want you to imagine when they brought back his body. The morning, the crying, the widow is crying. Everybody's crying. After the funeral, after a few days, David says, I will help the widow. <laughs> I will take care of the widow. <laughs> and I will take care of the unborn child. Because Uriah was a good man. Say with me, corrupt wisdom. Do you realize what we are talking about is happening in the church every day? It's in the church every day. It's among pastors, among believers, among all. That is not what it means to be a witness for Jesus. And soon, the boy is born. And David tells everybody, I adapt him. He will be like my, my own child. And nobody suspected anything. Everything was solved. Everything was okay. Until one day, nothing comes. 
and says king there was a man who saw many sheep but when he wanted to kill one he went to his neighbor who had only one killed him and took his one sheep. And David said, what? He deserves to die. And Nathan says, that man is you. Do you know how you killed Uriah? And you took his wife? You had so many. God allowed you to have many wives. Why did you take that one? And David said, oh God, I have sinned against God. For the first time, everybody knew. Oh. Think about that day when everybody will know. Tell your neighbor, one day some everybody may know. But let me finish with this. David Dawidi was forgiven by God. And he fasted that the boy would not die. But the boy died. To everybody, that was the end of the story. David was not king again and everything. But to David, it was not the end. I'm sure every time he sat down, he would think, how did I get so low? How could I have done all of that? And I hid it all in me. In other words, when you are sitting alone, you say, this thing may destroy me one day. This thing may destroy me one day. It's not enough to be forgiven. I must get rid of it. But how? David went into fasting and prayer. And he, he cried to God. And out of that fasting and prayer, he got his freedom. But we all, he also gives us a wonderful, wonderful prayer of repentance. And I want us to conclude today by just reading the words of this prayer. <coughs> he says in Psalms 51, verse 1, Have mercy upon me, O God, according to your loving kindness, according to the multitude of your tender mercies. Blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions, and my sin is always before me. Against you, you only, have I sinned and done this evil in your sight, that you may be found just when you speak and blameless when you judge. On Saturday, I am Kama Gwadino Kwagalokutagwao. Orokusasira kwa kunji nzija kebe no nobi yange bion na Na za kwa butalibu tukirivu wange Ontukuliza dalo kwa mchibichi yange Ebe no nobi yange mbikiriza Ere bibi yange mbimanyi buli jo Gwe njene gwe njene Nenko le butalibu ya butukirivu maso gongo Raba norwecho Dio yogira bitufu Era nensala yo eyo musango ya buwenkanya Verse 5 Behold I was brought forth in iniquity and in sin my mother conceived me. Behold, you desire truth in the inward parts. And in the hidden part, you'll make me know wisdom. Daladala nazali wa mchivi. Kasoke dento ndi wa mwuduto wa mange ndi mwono onyi. Oyagala mazimaga vira dala mwuti magwange. Ompa magezi munda mwonzi. Purge me with high soap and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. 
Make me hear joy and gladness that the bones you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Oyagala mazima gavya dalam mutima gwango mpa magezi munda munze onaze ne ezobu ntukule onaze ntukule nokusinga omuzira create me creating me a clean heart o god and renew a steadfast spirit within me do not cast me away from your presence and do not take your holy spirit from me restore to me the joy of salvation and uphold me by your generous spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners shall be converted to you. Deliver me from the guilt of bloodshed, O God, the God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing aloud of your righteousness. Totu nuli da bibibi yange, ero osangule binono yange bionna, ontonde mumu timo mulongo fai katonda, ero nteka mumu yo mulonji munda yange, tongo ba wole, Ira tonzi jako moyo wa mtukovu. Onkomeze we sangali obloko ziwo. Ero mpomo temo gugonde labio ya gada. Ndiyo kenji giriza wono nyama kubogo. Na bakule bibi. Bakuchuki renga. Bakume oji ori. Ondoko le mchibi. Ondoko le mchibi choko iwo msai. Ayi katonda. Gwa katonda. Uwo obloko ziwo wangu. Ulimiru wange. Luna atendele zango butu kile vubo. O Lord open my lips and my mouth shall show forth your praise. For you do not desire sacrifice, or else I would give it. You do not delight in burnt offerings. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. These, O oh God, you will not despise. Do good in your good pleasure to Zion. Build the walls of Jerusalem. Then you shall be pleased with the sacrifice of righteousness. With burnt offerings and whole burnt offerings, then shall they offer bulls on your altar. Aye mukamu ya sami ya mimuaji yangi na kamu waka angi kana kutende reza anga. To sanyukira sadaka na andi kulete de. Nebi uwa yebi okebua to sanyukira. Sadaka katonda jaya gara. Gwe muyo kutege do kusabia kwa guo. Omutima ugume nyesero gubo nerede. Aye katonda to guga yenga. Okula kula nyesanyo nengabu osima. Yerusalemi ochize kubugo wacho. Olioko sanyukira sadaka yobu tukirivu. Ebi uwa yebi okebua yebi kusanyusa. Yebi kusanyusa. Nente ziwe uwe yo. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We are concluding. And we have seen that if we are going to really stand as witnesses for Jesus, we need the power of the Holy Spirit. Because the Bible says those who are led by the Spirit are the children of God. And we have seen that the, the grip, the tool the enemy uses to keep us in his power and captivity even when we know what is right is corrupt wisdom. Even if we have, we speak in tongues. If we do not deal with corrupt wisdom, we shall continue stumbling and falling. But corrupt wisdom operates from self-life, self-centeredness, self-love, self-will, self-gratification, self-promotion, and all kinds of things. And that's why Jesus said, if you do not die to yourself, you will lose your life. That's why the Bible tells us, mortify the flesh. Put, put to death the flesh. That thing which every one of us knows, it always comes and stumbles us. You remember the scripture says in the book of Hebrews, you have not fought unto blood, fighting with a sin that easily ensnares you. We 
We are not saying we are not saved. We are saved. We have the Holy Spirit. But the Holy Spirit will not kill the flesh for us. It's us. And we saw David. Man with the heart after God. See how, how low he sank. Lasting after a woman. Taking someone else's wife. Trying to deceive. Then killing the husband. And hiding it. Secretly adapting the child and the wife, taking the wife. Deceiving everybody. He was a man after God. But he, he did all of that. You can do the same. I can do the same. If we don't deal with that thing, it will deal with us. Are you with me? David dealt with it. He went and cried to the Lord and waited upon the Lord. And when he died, the Bible says he was laid to rest having fulfilled all God's purposes in his generation. What about you and I? Shall it be said of us when we rest that this man, this woman fulfilled all God's purposes in his generation? Because that thing is intended to stop us. So we want to come before the Lord. And say to the Lord. That thing. I want to get rid of that thing. Tomorrow. We will be looking at. How do we go about dealing with that thing. And how do we go about giving more control to the Holy Spirit in our lives that we may become witnesses, true witnesses of God. Amen. 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 I want you to raise your hand and say to God I thank you, my God, for you who began a good work in me will bring it to accomplishment. It is God who called me. It is God who will work. Amen. Amen. Let's rise unto our feet.